Hey guys, welcome to uh, to chemistry, and I'm going to be doing these. I'm going to just post them on YouTube. These lessons a couple times a week to uh, just kind of keep us moving through the class. And I really need you guys, you know, as long as we're on this hybrid schedule, to <clears throat> to be following these uh, as I'm doing these. So uh, again, welcome to chemistry. I'm already you know uh, proud of you that you're willing to take a class like this. Uh, it's a, it's a challenging class. Hopefully it'll be a fun class, but it, <clears throat> it will definitely be a class that you need to work and you need to stay up in it. And, um, in doing your daily work, asking questions are important. Uh, today we're going to start chapter one notes. And before I get into that, one other thing I think is very important is that when you guys are applying to colleges, the one class that colleges really love to see is chemistry. And because they know it's a rigorous class, they know that it's a class that uh, <clears throat> is a cumulative class that builds as it goes. And I, colleges like that. So so know, know that you're helping yourself in the future, both in preparing you better for if you want to go to college or the military or work, just in terms of work ethic and stick to itiveness. So, so welcome to chemistry. Uh, one thing I always do is jokes. So here we go. We got to get started off with some jokes. So here we go. Kind of silly jokes some of the time. Sometimes they're pretty good. What? Why do only small elves live under toad stools because there is there is not much room not mushroom not mushroom i didn't say that very good uh the next the next one where do pianists go for vacation to the florida keys the florida keys so <clears throat> there you go there's the jokes for today so what i want to do today is i want to start chapter one notes and uh if you go to my website which is right behind me. <clears throat> uh, the notes are there. I'm going to try and link it up to Canvas as well. The notes are there, and uh, you can see them. And I'm not going to require you at all. Whatever you want to do for notes, I think it's a good idea to either print out the notes and to just write in notes as we go through it, or I really think I'm old school. It's worth you writing the notes down. Um, and again, when we're in class, we'll be doing this. And again, a couple times a week, I'm going to be posting lessons. So it's important that you guys follow along. So <clears throat> today, chapter one, introductory chapter. Most chapters are going to take us a week and a half or two weeks to go through. We're going to go through chapter one. It's the only one like this. We're going to go through it uh, right now we're in, in the next 20 minutes or so. So let me get up the notes here. Sorry, I'm kind of a work in progress on this. So here we go. Again, you guys can have these notes in front of you, and I'll kind of fill in the blanks as we go go through this. So, uh, and again, you can print out the notes from my website, like I've got behind me here, bit.ly backslash wood hrhs, and I'll also try and uh, link them to Canvas. And something in canvas for me is going to be a work in progress but i'll hopefully make it something that will be beneficial to you okay so we're taking a class here called called chemistry it's about the science of chemistry and you can see that the definition of chemistry is a science that studies matter and the changes it goes through and i always simplify it as this is chemistry is this science that studies stuff and the changes this stuff goes through. And on Monday and Tuesday, I'm gonna do a couple of demos and we can talk about that a little bit. And we can be talking about water or we can be talking about the, uh, like this pan, what it is made up of or, or air or what I'm exhaling and then the changes it goes through. And chemistry is called the central science. And the reason it's called the central science is because all the other sciences are really better understood with the knowledge of chemistry. And if you took biology last year, which probably most of you did, you will remember that you spent a week or two just doing, just doing chemistry. So, so and that's why chemistry is called the central science. And this is because all the other branches of science are better understood with the knowledge of chemistry. And that can that goes into physics. That goes. I I know I've taught astronomy before, meteorology, geology. 
um, all these sciences are better understood with a knowledge of chemistry. <clears throat> I think one thing that makes chemistry harder is that uh, chem in biology, you think about there was things that you could hold on to, uh, you could dissect. In chemistry, the things are, are sub-microscopic, so you can't see them. And uh, sometimes it's harder to, to picture them. Okay, branches of chemistry. So if you think of branches of science, you have biology and chemistry and physics and astronomy and meteorology and geology. Think of branches within biology where you have microbiology, genetics, botany, zoology, uh, <clears throat> and branches of chemistry. So in that first blank, number one, organic, that first blank is the element carbon carbon so the first blank is carbon so organic chemistry is the study of carbon containing compounds number two inorganic chemistry the study of substances without carbon and we will talk about uh, compounds with carbon but organic chemistry is only about compounds with carbon there's millions of compounds with carbon in it and so it's a whole study in and of itself but Number two, inorganic chemistry is the study of substances without carbon, and that is what our class is really about. Uh, in the third, number three, analytical chemistry, it, what it goes in that blank is the word composition. So in number three, what goes in the blank there is composition. So analytical chemistry is the study of the, the composition of matter. And we will talk about that some, and we'll do some labs. We're actually going to determine trying to determine the chemical formula of a compound. And, uh, and when I took, because I majored in chemistry in college, so my first year lecture and lab for the entire year, the fall and the spring, was really what we're doing, number two, what we're doing, just more advanced. So I had three hours of lecture, two or three hours of lab. I think 10 total hours for the year was basic inorganic chemistry. Second year, I took... Uh, organic chemistry and again it was five credits in the fall five credits in the in the spring it was three hours of lecture two or three hours of lab well in my third year I took a semester of analytical chemistry which again was a three-hour lecture two-hour lab but then second semester I took physical chemistry number four physical chemistry the theoretical study of matter using math and physics and we will not touch on that at all in our class that was I think the hardest class I ever took as a, as a college student back 10 million years ago and then five biochemistry so from the name of that you can figure out what that means the study of the chemistry of living things and to be able to do biochemistry you had to have or inorganic and organic chemistry and that's what i did in my senior year of college and so again i took a three-hour lecture two-hour lab for both the fall and the spring on biochemistry and found it very fascinating. And so the, the medical researchers now worldwide are people that are familiar with biochemistry and trying to figure out a vaccine and treatment for the COVID-19. Okay, so kind of just a, a, a general on what chemistry is about, on the branches of chemistry, and then every time you have a science class, you need to talk about the scientific method. Okay, and to me, the scientific method is simply a problem-solving technique. And I think we use it. I'm going to give you some examples. We use it all the time. We use the, the scientific method all the time. And to me, it has four simple steps. The first one is observations. And a quantitative observation is a numerical one. And I always have to have simple ways to remember things, but quantitative with the letter N in it is numerical. So examples, under quantitative where it says examples, are anything that deals with numbers. So to say the time for the reaction is 11.1 .1 seconds, that's quantitative because it's numerical. Or to say that the temperature of the liquid was 24.3 degrees Celsius, that's an example of quantitative because it's numerical. Then qualitative, another observation, qualitative, without the, without the N, would be non-numerical. So it's like a quality. So to say that the, uh, the liquid has an odor, that would be an example of a qualitative observation because it doesn't deal with the numbers. Or to say 
that the the liquid is green in color that would be a qualitative observation because it's not numerical so quantitative is numerical an observation that's numerical qualitative is non-numerical has to do with equality so the first thing in the the scientific method is an observation the next thing number two is a hypothesis which is an educated guess on your observation and when we do lab write-ups and we're going to do our first lab next wednesday thursday so you're going to need goggles for wednesday thursday but <clears throat> sometimes i would have you make a hypothesis and other times i'm not other times it's more of an exploration lab third step is experiment so we've seen this observation we make a guess about it a hypothesis and then we test it experiment uh, number three is experiment test the hypothesis uh, and then finally four we draw the conclusion was the hypothesis right or wrong so we'll we'll use that in chemistry you use that in your other science classes that you've had uh, here at here at our school as well as when you're in middle school and elementary school but but i think we use this all the time so here here are some examples <clears throat> um, could you come back in a few minutes um, say like, like, let's say that on a cold winter day, again, I say we use this all the time. So on a cold winter day, let's say that you go out and your car doesn't start. So you've got a qualitative observation. Number one, the car doesn't start. So number two, you make a guess. And if you're familiar with cars at all, your guess would be that the, uh, the car needs to jump, the battery is dead. So then number three, your experiment is you call your parents or a friend or one of your brothers or sisters and you hook up the battery cable, you test the hypothesis, the battery was dead, and then you draw the conclusion. Hopefully that gets your car going because if not, then you gotta go back to number two and you gotta make another guess. So that's what I mean by saying we can use this all the time. Another example is I play golf, sometimes usually poorly occasionally okay so i have an observation that i hook the ball a lot it goes sharp hook to the left so i make a guess that uh so i should get together with mr cushing our golf coach or, or another good friend who used to be our golf coach mr barker and i'd have them kind of coach me and they would tell me you know to change my grip or to change my stance or something so my high hypothesis say is they say change your grip so then my experiment is I go to the driving range, I try that new grip, and I see how it works, and then the conclusion is it helped or didn't help, or I just am not very good at golf. Okay, so uh, chemistry, the scientific method, a couple other chemistry terms, and then we'll be done. Okay, a theory is a summary of observed behavior, a thoroughly tested model. And uh, I always think sometimes the word theory is not always used right. Example to me is the uh, Big Bang Theory, the old television show. But the theory is, is that everything came from this small little everything, the entire universe, this thing like the tip of a needle. Uh, and there's evidence for that, but you can't test that. So I think it'd be better to see the Big Bang idea. But a theory, a great example of that in our class is the atomic theory. Uh, and we're gonna talk about that later this fall. But a great example of a theory is the atomic theory because there's tests that have been done, experiments that have been done, and I'll, I'll explain those, that lead scientists to believe that there was, and there, there is an atom. A law, a summary of observed behavior that holds, and in that blank is the word all. So a summary of observed behavior that holds in all circumstances, in all circumstances. So two foundational laws, examples under law. Number one is the law of conservation of mass. So under law, example number one is the law of conservation of mass, which says, and these are fat, two foundational laws to chemistry and physics and really all physical science. And that says the law of conservation of mass says the total amount of mass always stays constant. In every experiment done, as long as the experiment's been done, if you weigh what you start with and you weigh what you end with, it weighs the same. There's an exception with nuclear reactions, which 
I don't know if we'll get to have time to in May and talk about, but if we weighed everything at the beginning and the end, it would weigh the same, which, which says, which means that atoms can't be created or destroyed. So, which makes me wonder, well, where did everything come from? And if we go back to the big bang, which again, I was telling you that they, at that time, they said that these, uh, atomic physicists are saying that atoms were just created. And I'm not saying that wasn't, but then the law of conservation of mass wouldn't have been uh, held on. So somewhere atoms came from, because they always stay constant. So number one law is the law of conservation of mass. The total mass in the system always remains constant. And number two is the law of conservation of energy. Number two, the law of conservation of energy, which is that the total energy in a system always remains constant. What happens with energy is energy is converted. Now, if you think about driving your car, you get gasoline, which has potential energy in the chemical bonds in the gasoline. You start your car and you get combustion going on. And so that, that potential energy, that uh, chemical energy is converted into mechanical energy as the pistons in your car move, but then there's friction as the tires on your road contact, tires contact the road, and that is turned into heat as well as in your engine. Well, all those are forms of energy, and the energy stays constant, but it's turned into heat, which is not a useful form of energy. Okay, and then measurement. Here's just a <clears throat> We would use these terms interchangeably in our everyday life, but precision is reproducing results. So getting the same thing over and over and over again. And it may not be the correct result, but it's getting the same thing over and over and over again. Accuracy is how close a measurement comes to the accepted value. So technically accuracy means how close are you to the correct value. So the difference between those is I'm a basketball coach. So, so let's say that I go to the basketball, to the free throw line, and I shoot 20 free throws, and 19 of those hit the front of the rim and miss. Well, I was precise because I got the same thing over and over and over again, but I wasn't accurate because I missed the target. Let's say uh, Nicole Jokic, the joker for the Nuggets, hopefully he'll do better in the next game than he did in the last game, and his teammates as well, say he goes to the free throw line and he shoots 20 free throws and he makes 19 out of 20. So he was precise because he got the same thing over and over and over again, but he was also accurate. Okay, and then just a quick visual on that. I think I could have screwed it up. Okay, no, I don't think I did. Hopefully I did. Okay, so on the uh, terms precision and accuracy, I'm going to use this. So let's say that we go to uh, a dartboard and, and we have three three people shooting at the dartboard. So this is a dartboard. Okay, so the first person, the first dartboard player. He or she, their shots are all here. So this person was not precise because they're not getting the same results and they are not accurate. Because an accurate dartboard thrower would hit the target. So the next person is like this, okay, which means they were precise science definition, because they got the same result over and over and over again, but they were not accurate. Because they didn't hit the target. And then hopefully Drew Locke for the Broncos will be like this. This person would have been precise and accurate. And hopefully that makes sense. On that. Okay, so that is chapter one. Okay, final thing is remember assignment do the next time I see you guys. So do on Monday or Tuesday, whichever day I have you, is to read chapter one in your book. Go to page 12 and 13 in your book and do these on a regular piece of paper. We're actually going to do our first lab on Wednesday, Thursday. So we're going to do some stuff on, on 
Monday, Tuesday, talking about lab safety, getting you with a lab partner, getting you a lab drawer. But I will take questions on this, and uh, I will give you our first. It's these little quizzes that we will do a lot over and over and over. But this is your assignment. This will be your first assignment, your first grade. So that is what is going on. So hopefully that is helpful. And uh, again, we're, I, I'm going to really need you guys to be doing these. So, hey, have a good weekend. And I will see you guys on Monday or Tuesday.